In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the partition function provided by the underscore JS code library. Now to make use of this library, we have to make sure that we include it in our web page. As you can see here, I'm including it from a popular CDN, but you can also download a copy to your local development server and reference it from there as well. Now the partition function is kind of interesting. Let's take an array of numbers like this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Create a result variable here. Now the partition function will take our numbers array here and it will allow us to basically iterate over this array taking each value and passing it into a predicate function. Now a predicate function is a function that basically either returns true or it returns false. And what this is going to do is based upon the result true or false, it's going to create two arrays. So for example, let's say I wanted to divide this array based upon all numbers greater than four being in one array and all numbers that were four or less being in a different array. Say function, I'm going to say num and then I'll say return num greater than four. Then we'll do console.dir result. Now let's take a look at the result of that. We're going to reload and see we have an array with two items and the two items are each an array. So the first item is an array of five to nine. So those are all the values that were in fact greater than four. And the, and the second array is an array of numbers that was less than four. So as you can see, we can use this partition function to basically take one larger array and based upon the predicate, we can actually create two arrays. Now, the number here is passed in as the first parameter, but this function actually passes in several parameters. Let's take a quick look at those. Console our arguments, switch back over to our web browser, we'll reload. Now notice we have an arguments object for each time we iterate over the array. And the arguments object has three properties on it. The first one represents the actual value we're passing in, the number itself. The second one represents the index value, and the third one is finally the original list of numbers. To kind of make this a little clearer, we could actually pass in like an array of letters. So we'll just create a short little array of letters. We'll do A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so now let's say I want to set this up so that basically I want to create an array that has vowels and then an array that just has consonants. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say result equal to underscore dot partition. I'm going to pass in my letters. Now I'm going to create my function and I'm going to have my letter, I'm going to have my index and then I'm going to have my original list of letters. And then here inside my function, I'm going to be returning a true or false value. So basically, I'm going to have an array of vowels here. So A, E, I, O, and U. And then I'm going to say index of letter and I'm simply going to return this and if the value is equal to negative one then we know that it's a consonant and if the value is not equal to negative one then we know that it is in fact a vowel. So let's reload this page again and oh, we have to output our value. There we go. 
reload. And now we have an array with B, C, and D. And we have an array with A and E. And of course, if we were to come up here and say console.dir arguments like that and reload, we'll see that the first argument is our letter, the second argument is an index, and then finally the third argument is the original array. So as you can see, the partition function is actually quite useful for being able to take an array, apply a predicate function to each item in the array to generate two arrays representing um, whether or not that particular item was true or false in the predicate.